Hey now, it is Saturday, which is family pizza and movie night, which is the family's favorite night of the week because we just get to eat a bunch of pizza and watch movies, which is super fun. Now, pizza is amazing, um, but if you're having it every week, it can kind of get uh, a little perhaps uh, tiresome. I mean, even if you're changing up ingredients, but it's super cool to be able to change the style. So in addition to my very thin crust, completely flat, edge to edge topping pizza, you can check the video out for that. Um, I've become a huge fan of the Detroit style pizza and that's what I'm making today. Especially since it's super cold outside, this is a great comfort food. So um, I'm going to be making two pizzas tonight, uh, but what I'll tell you here for the actual waiting will be if you're making a single pizza. So this is starting off just with uh, um, white bread flour and you can use 315, so 315 grams of that. To it, I'm going to be adding nine grams of sea salt, five grams of instant rise yeast. I'm going to throw in my dough hook. I like using the stand mixer for this, it's super easy. I'm just going to mix it for a second to get that, uh, get the yeast and the salt integrated with the flour just a little bit. And then to it, I'm going to be adding some uh, water. This is warm water, it's about 110 Fahrenheit. And I've got 220 grams or mils of that. So I'm just going to pour it in. And the trick now is I'm not going to do the full mix right off the bat. I'm going to just let this go for about 45 or 60 seconds. And we're just trying to get everything to kind of clump together. And then I'm going to let it rest for 10 minutes. So probably another uh, 20 seconds here or so. It's really just trying to get the uh, all the flour hydrated. Almost there. Almost there. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. This will be ready in another few seconds. I'm just going to cover it up with this towel, and when we come back, uh, it'll be time to actually get it all mixed up. Yeah, that's that's actually good there. So I'm just going to cover it up here now. And uh, yeah, 10 minutes. Now, while I'm waiting on that dough, I just want to quickly point out that, so I said pizza is awesome, and yes it is, and I know people are fanatical about this, particularly when you're talking about regional pizzas. Uh, what I'm making today is my version of a Detroit-style pizza. I've kind of deviated from tradition just a little bit here, particularly with regards to my sauce. Uh, so, I mean, if you live in Detroit, or Lord help me, if you work in a Detroit pizzeria, uh, or if you've been to Detroit before, and you have... Um, you know, I had this pizza before, it'll be like, well, that's not exactly how they do it, okay? Um, this is how I like to make it. I think it works really well, and everybody loves it around here. So, disclaimer off. Well, after 10 minutes, you can see the dough has just been hanging out here. Um, I'm going to now mix it for 10 minutes. I'm going to put it on uh, the second setting up here. And in about 10 minutes, it should be ready to go. This is loud, so let's cut. So right now I'm two minutes in and I just wanted to show you what it looks like on the bottom. So the dough should be sticking a little bit to the bottom, but it's it's definitely not sticking to the side. So that's pretty good. So we'll let this keep going for the remainder of that 10 minutes. All right, so that has been 10 minutes and you can see it's like really nice. It's uh, reasonably silky and smooth. I'm just gonna lightly dust my hands with flour here just to make the extraction process a little bit easier, getting everything off of this hook. This is like a, a reasonably uh, hydrated dough, so it's a little sticky. Um, okay, so one last little dusting. I'm going to scoop it out, and then I'm going to just use some uh, spray here, some oil spray, get down the inside of this, kind of get this into a bit of a ball, plunk it back in and cover it up and um, I'll give it probably about two hours. I want it to double in size. I'm going to cover it up uh, with plastic. You could use a wet towel. Some people like that method, but I swear that lowers the temperature a little bit just with the evaporation and whatnot. Um, so we'll do that. I'll pop it up on top of the fridge into a warmish spot and we'll check back on it once it's risen. Over here, I'm actually um, starting my sauce. So this was about a quarter cup of red onion. Uh, the onion didn't really matter too much. I just had some red onion, felt like using it up. Uh, this was three big cloves of garlic, um, probably about half a teaspoon of uh, red chili flakes and uh, some seasoning and about a tablespoon of oregano, dried oregano. And it's just nicely sauteed up here. To that I'm adding a 28 ounce can of San Marzano uh, tomatoes. 
I prefer this to the crushed tomatoes just because I love these tomatoes. And it's kind of funny because I'm about to um, somewhat crush them. I'm just going to mash them up a little bit with my, um, with my utensil here. I do like to have some chunks of tomatoes in here, but I don't obviously want the whole, whole tomato. And since this is already um, nice and hot, I didn't want to get in there with my hand and like hand crush them, which is what I do with some other types of sauces I do. And I didn't feel like dirtying another, dirtying another bowl. So just kind of giving them a little bit of a mash. To that, I'm going to add um, several fresh basil leaves. And now I'm just going to let this sit. I'll just keep stirring it every now and then, just getting it on low heat. It's going to have probably 30 or 40 minutes before I need it. So it's just going to be able to reduce a little bit further, get nice and hot, tons of flavor, and it'll be delicious on the pizza. So yeah, the next step is to um, work with the dough. Well, here we have it. This dough has been rising. When I moved it down here, um, it did deflate a little bit, but it had just over two hours. Um, I got caught up making my sauce there, which was lots of fun, and that slowed me down just a little. So now I'm going to get this out, and I'm going to need to divide it because this is for two pizzas. So I'm just going to pop it out. I'm going to weigh it, and uh, then I'm going to get it into these pans. So these are the two pans I've got. Uh, this is obviously my favorite one. This is an awesome Lloyd's pan, which is amazing for this uh, whole process. This is just another aluminum pan here. Um, I'm getting um, probably two tablespoons or so of all, uh, really nice olive oil in there. I'm going to kind of smoosh that around a little bit, get the dough in there, and then we'll take a look. Okay, so I just use my fingers, hey there kiddo, use my fingers and spread everything out. You don't want to get it up on the sides, the olive oil, uh, it's just on the, the bottoms. And now I'm taking this dough and I'm stretching it out. Um, we're not going to get it stretched out all the way. Here, just back the camera up a little bit. We're not going to get it stretched out all the way right now where we need it. Um, we're just getting it mostly stretched and then we're going to give it a half hour just for everything to relax a little bit and then we'll be able to finish it off. So I'm just doing a bit of a stretch, kind of like two thirds of where we're going to want it here. Do that with both of these. Uh, let it sit for half an hour during which time that sauce that I, I started just a few minutes ago is able to uh, further reduce and get ready. Uh, I'm also going to at this point uh, start to preheat my oven. We'll talk about that in a few minutes though. So here's the dough after about five minutes. Uh, you can see it kind of uh, shrunk back just a little bit. I'm just going to keep letting this go until the half hour is over and then I will finish stretching that out. In the meantime, here's a little shot of that sauce, just nicely reducing. Got a little extra fresh basil uh, ready to go on one of those pizzas. And the oven is preheating. I'm going to have it up at uh, 500 degrees. That's actually as hot as my oven goes. Uh, if yours can get up hotter, 520, 550, whatever, you can do that. It'll just take less time to cook and uh, have that rack in the middle. So when we come back, I'll finish stretching out that dough. Yep. Well, the oven is preheated. It's been sitting at 500 for just a little bit. The dough is ready to kind of play around with here and manipulate. So the trick is just to try to stretch it. I'll just move the one pan out of the way into the corners as much as possible. And it's going to still want to pull away probably a little bit. Again, it's on a slick bed of oil there, which is going to make this beautiful buttery crust. But for now, it's causing a bit of an issue. I have a bit of a cheat where I just take pepperoni and I'll get a little piece in each of the corners. Just kind of push it in a little bit like that. And that's going to help hold it, especially once I start to get these pieces here. And then the cheese that's going on top of that will further hold it in place. So I'm just going to go and lay out all of this pepperoni. You can kind of mush down, well, squish down the dough just a little bit here as well. Mush is the technical term for it. Get all this pepperoni on here nicely. Pepperoni. Pepperoni. Who likes pepperoni pizza here? Me. Do you? Are you sure? Yep. I'm not sure about that. Pepperoni. Pepperoni. And again, kind of along the edges here as well, just doing that. Pushing the dough up just a little bit. Mm. It will make it so that there's just the tiniest edge of, of crust around the sides, but I like that because it just sort of helps prevent stuff from wanting to slide off the, the outside parts there. So there we go. Nice layer of pepperoni on here. At this point, now we get to put the cheese on. So I'm going to go again to those corners and just make sure that I've got some, some cheese there in the corners. Mushing it up. 
and you want to make sure that you've got some cheese going right around the perimeter. And part of the reason for that is as, as that uh, cheese goes ahead and melts, some of that fat's going to get around and tuck underneath and that's where you get that really nicely uh, crispy crust. So I'm just going to keep doing this. Okay, let's dump these on here. Perfect. And just kind of spread it out like so. Kind of evenly. And that's 12 ounces uh, or 340 grams of cheese, like I said. This low moisture cheese that I just, or low moisture mozzarella, I just cubed it up. And these are like three quarter inch to one inch or so uh, cubes, which is perfect. Now, I just want to get some sauce on here. Now, some people traditionally do like, like three stripes or, or something like that. I like to take it and just do little dollops roughly where it's actually going to be cut. So it's almost like each piece has its own little splash of sauce because I'm going to have this cut into eight pieces. Just going to do that. A little bit more over here. Oh, I just got sauce on my island. Oh, well. And a little bit more like that. Beauty. And then I might just throw a little bit of pepperoni, one piece on each of those because more meat is always fun. That one is now ready to go in. So now I'm just going to do the second one here. This one's getting a little bit further away from tradition. Um, there will be pepperoni on it, but there's some other fun stuff here as well. So let's get the meat on. So we need pepperoni in the corners there. Push this into those. And then similarly to the other one, I'm just going to Run the pepperoni along here, along the edges, making sure the whole bottom is covered. Run this up. I've got some bacon here. You can see that I went ahead and baked that in the oven. The way that I like to do that bacon is I'll lay it out nicely on a baking sheet. I've got one of those silicone sheets on there. You can also use parchment paper. And then I set it in the cold oven and set it to 375. And by the time the oven itself hit 375, it took uh, maybe five or 10 minutes or so just to crisp up that bacon how I liked it. Beautiful, got that. Let's get the cheese on there for this one here. Again, just making sure that we get the cheese in the corners and around those perimeters as well. So with these, these are those, uh, I want to say eight by 14 inch pans. So it's like four along the edges and then five or so around the long side there. Spread it out nicely. Again, kind of poof it down a little bit here. Then I'm going to take on this one because this one's going to be a little bit fancier. Some of this fresh basil that I had chopped up because we've got a fresh basil plant in the house right now, which is sweet. Going to get some of this bacon on top of it here, and that's just going to wind up soaking right in to this cheese. It's nice to use the, the cubes of mozzarella because it takes longer for it to melt, and you're not going to wind up with a bunch of burnt uh, cheese on the top. It will brown up nicely by the time we're pulling it out. Yeah, I'm putting all that bacon on there. That's what we're doing. And I'm going to throw a gentle sprinkle of this is some of my homemade capicola. You can check out my video on dry aging that. This stuff is super fun. It'll crisp up nicely as well. And on half of this one, because I like my pizza spicy, I'm going to be throwing on some fresh jalapenos on half. And my wife, who actually, you know what? I'm going to throw the sauce on top of that and then put down the jalapenos because these will be our little indicators of whose half is whose. So, this that sauce on here so you can see that 28 ounce can when you're doing it like this will wind up uh, being enough for two pizzas just enough to get it uh, not overly saucy but just the right amount now jalapenos on half and the other half is going to have some beautiful olive tapenade that we made that's my mother-in-law's sweet secret there. So we'll just get some of this on here too. So mine will be nice and spicy and hers will have this fun 
kind of Italian-y, Portuguese sort of olive tapenade on there. Sweet. All right, so I'm just going to get my hands cleaned up here and then we'll fire these in the oven. All right, all cleaned up, ready to go in the oven. Now, if I was doing just a single pizza, I would be laying them in like that right in the middle, but because it's the two, we want everything to be ready at the same time. I'm going to pop them in like this. They take about 20 to 25 minutes or so at the 500 degrees, so if you're going hotter, it'll take less time than that. So I'm just going to set my timer for actually 10 minutes initially, and after that, I'm going to rotate them so what's at the back is now at the front, and I might actually also go side to side. They'll cook, uh, they'll bake a little bit more evenly. So we'll check on them in 10. So after 10 minutes, I'm just gonna pop this one out here for one second so that I can flip this and pop this into here and check on it in another 10. Okay, so this is after 21 minutes. These are looking beautiful. I'm gonna pop them out, set them here. Now, this is the hardest part because as tempting as it is to light into these immediately, I like to let them sit for about 10 minutes and they actually cut quite a bit better. So 10 minutes on the timer and then we're back. So after 10 minutes, I'm just going to take this thin metal spatula. I'm just gonna run it around the edges here to make sure that this uh, lets go really nicely when it is time to pop it out of the pan be right away. These pans aren't super hot still, but I just don't want to risk burning my delicate little fingers. Here. I'm also going to use this spatula to help me actually remove the pizzas uh, from their pans. Okay, so that's good. So I'm just going to transfer these over to a cutting board and we will resume. Alrighty, so now, yeah, I can touch these, so no worries. Just lifting them up. Sliding them out like so. Repeat with the second. This is why it's important to have all that nice oil in there. That makes the removal pretty slick. Okay, I'm just gonna get my pizza cutter here and we will chop these up. All right, so I'm just going to cut this up here. My sweet little pizza cutter. So I want this in um, eight pieces. So I'm just gonna go down the middle like that and then Cut this into four. There's two. You hear the pitter patter of hungry feet here, right? <laughs> awesome. There we go. So there is pizza number one. I'm gonna get this served up before I get killed. But uh, yeah, I'd say, as you can see, this is some beautiful little pizza. Look at that nice char around the edges. It's amazing, it smells fantastic. It is time for pizza and movie night. So yeah, folks, till next time, keep her at 11.